a seed. Most living organisms on this planet begin life from a seed. A seed once planted requires care and nurturing before it sprouts into something wonderful. In the Pacific Asia, South Central Asia, and West Central Africa fields, we have planted a seed of hope. At the 2019 World Conference, a detailed plan for financing the Bridge of Hope was unveiled. The presiding bishopric presented a plan that would meet the church's retirement obligations and relieve it from a burdening liability. Put simply, the plan would allow the presiding bishopric to borrow from the cash investments of congregations and mission centers. Following World Conference, the Council of Twelve met to develop a plan that would reduce this borrowing through jurisdictional contributions. Each field was assigned a target based on the retirement obligations of that area. If the field met its target, then there would be no borrowing of cash assets from their jurisdictions. Following the assignment of the field targets, field leadership for the Pacific Asia, South Central Asia, and West and Central Africa fields combined their targets into a single amount and proceeded to explore how this target could be reached. In the past, it was common to assign assessments to each jurisdiction based on some kind of formula. Inspired by recent counsel, the field leadership felt that a new model of funding was needed, a model not based on formulas, but guided by principles of generosity. Through prayerful reflection and discernment, the field leadership recognized that with the Bridge of Hope, which we saw as our responsibility, there lay a seed of hope, an opportunity. Over the past decade, we have experienced frequent reductions in field ministries due to shrinking operating budgets. After weeks and months of careful deliberation and analysis, field leadership teams saw their new initiatives scrapped because of budget realities. Leadership teams were deeply frustrated over their inability to plan and implement new missional strategies. What is needed is sustainable funding, but how? This is where we determined that it was time to plant a new seed, the seed of hope. In March of 2007, President Vesey presented these inspired words to the church. Faithful disciples respond to an increasing awareness of the abundant generosity of God by sharing according to the desires of their hearts, not by commandment or constraint. Break free of the shackles of conventional culture that mainly promote self-serving interests. Give generously according to your true capacity. This counsel is not new, but rooted in the message and life of Jesus as reflected in the gospel narratives of the early first century. It reminds us of the story of generosity told in the gospel of Mark of the widow's sacrificial offering at the temple. It calls us to reflect inwardly, as did the rich young ruler in Luke chapter 18. It challenges us to follow unconventional wisdom recorded in Matthew 6, 21 that suggests, where your treasure is, your heart will also be. True capacity is about renewed understanding of generosity. It is not guided by easy formulas, rather it is a process of discovering who we are and whose we are. It is our pathway for becoming true disciples. Seeds of Hope, the initiative of the Pacific Asia, South Central Asia, and West and Central Africa fields is guided by this council. The Bridge of Hope presents a formidable challenge but it also gives us an unprecedented opportunity. These three fields are choosing to respond to the needs of the church by attempting to live out true generosity. Every jurisdiction 
in these three fields is invited to review their assets. The focus of Seeds of Hope is not about increasing contributor giving. While individuals and jurisdictions may choose to make offerings to support Seeds of Hope, the focus of Seeds of Hope is for each congregation and mission center to evaluate what they have and how they use it. Are the church's assets structured to maximize missional opportunity? The key to Seeds of Hope is examining the stewardship of what we already have and aligning our assets to respond to God's vision for the church. Where your treasure is, your heart will also be. It is our effort to align what we have with Christ's mission. In the early stages of developing the Seeds of Hope initiative, we experienced a transforming moment through the generosity of our leadership in West and Central Africa. Seeds of Hope will be operationalized through the actions of a board of directors that includes membership from the participating jurisdictions. This board will receive proposals and make decisions regarding allocation of funding for missional projects. Every participating mission center is a stakeholder in Seeds of Hope. But something unusual happened when field leadership were notified by the local leaders in West and Central Africa that while they were fully supportive and participating in Seeds of Hope, they asked not to be included on the governing board. Rather, they would entrust to the other leaders of the jurisdictions to make decisions that would be best for the entire church. This kind of response was completely unexpected and unprecedented and was challenged by the field leadership. West and Central Africa had as much of a right to be on the governing board as any other jurisdiction. As they discussed their rationale, field leadership yielded and were deeply humbled by their faith. It was as if we were witnessing firsthand the widow in the temple giving everything she had and seeking nothing in return. There is no question that the needs of the church in West and Central Africa are significant. They have a right to lay claim to funding support that may emerge from Seeds of Hope. But instead of looking at what they might receive, they chose to entrust to others the decision to review the broader needs of the church and allocate funding to the highest priorities. At the beginning of our Seeds of Hope launching, we were blessed with a testimony of what it means to live with a spirit of generosity. Where your treasure is, your heart will also be. As the Seeds of Hope was unveiled to the mission centers, there were many questions, good questions. Among the most prominent was, what is our true capacity? How do we determine how much to give? In our exploration of this question, we found wise counsel from words shared by the presiding bishop in February of 2014. I quote, There is no formula to calculate true capacity, nor is there a certain amount or threshold that once reached means we've made it to true capacity. True capacity cannot be defined by or for each other. A family's true capacity, its pathway to the joy in giving, must be determined by its own journey of being generous. Is true capacity accomplished when we follow the six principles to live by in a disciple's generous response? Or is it as simple as explained by biblical scholar Mark Powell in his thoughts regarding sacrificial giving? He says, we may find it helpful to evaluate our giving prayerfully in light of two words, cheerful sacrifice. These words provide us with twin guidelines. One, if our giving is not a sacrifice, we're probably not giving enough. And two, if we're not giving cheerfully, we may be giving too much. In our search to discover our true capacity, we quickly recognized 
that true capacity does not answer how much I should give. Rather, it is a guide to how we live. True capacity points us back to the first of the church's nine enduring principles, grace and generosity. Let us remember these enduring principles are at the core of our identity as community of Christ. They define who we are or who God is calling us to be. In this first principle, we recognize the unconditional grace of Jesus Christ and in response, we generously share our witness, resources, ministries, and sacraments according to our true capacity. True capacity is the path lived by a faithful disciple. Seeds of Hope is the opportunity given to the community of Christ disciples in Pacific Asia, South Central Asia, and West and Central Africa. Our faithful response to Seeds of Hope will allow us to support those who brought us to where we are and gives us the opportunity to provide for those yet to come. It is our gift to the future. We won't know for several months if we will meet our funding target set to us at the beginning, but the seed of hope has been planted. And one day it will grow and blossom into something beautiful. And regardless of our outcome, we have been given the opportunity to demonstrate how to make generosity and true capacity more than just principles or words. It is my prayer that this will be our legacy gift to those that follow us on the path of discipleship in the community of Christ. On this day of communion, we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. We're given time to reflect on our discipleship commitment made in the waters of baptism. It is a time of renewal. I invite you to reflect on the enduring principle of grace and generosity. You are the recipients of God's unconditional grace. No strings. It is given. Receive it. Allow the transforming power of this sacrament to free you from conventional or cultural constraints in order to live the principles of generosity. On bended knee and bowed head, allow a new seed to be planted, not just for you, but also for those to come.